So my name is Otto Kekäläinen, and I came all the way from Finland to en enjoy the snow-free land you have here, which is very warm and nice <coughs> for me. <coughs> so this is the last talk for today, but it's, it's packed with useful information. How many of you are developers? Wow, almost everybody. So this is super important and useful and concrete information for developers and also for people who own WordPress sites. They can learn something about this, what is the correct approach to performance problems in WordPress. And I've already published my slides online and you can see my Twitter handle there. So if you follow me on Twitter, you can find the links to the slides. So you don't need to make any notes or anything. You can just look at the slides which are already online. All right. So uh, I've been using Linux for since like 1999 and I'm, I, I love open source and I like uh, going around the world in conferences teaching best practices to people and I also like to contribute and participate in open source and I call myself a full stack developer meaning that I code in JavaScript, in PHP and then in a few other languages so that I also participate in uh, improving like Redis and Nginx and MariaDB and Linux the kernel and so on. So I'm a true full stack developer. And currently I work as the CEO for Seravo. It's a very technical CEO for Seravo. And Seravo is a company, it's not a digital agency, it's a pure hosting and upkeep company. So we have our background in Linux server maintenance and at Seravo, we manage hundreds of, actually we have like uh, 1,500 customers and we manage their enterprise grade WordPress sites, taking care of security and performance and everything so that they, they run smoothly. And we have lots of experience re regarding scalability and performance. So the background of WordPress, it's hugely popular. I just read that something like 29% of all websites online currently run WordPress. And the success factors, at least I think so, is that WordPress is very easy to use. It's easy for the end user, at least if you compare with other uh, publishing systems like SharePoint or, or Joomla or Drupal or, or whatever. WordPress is very easy to use compared to th those. And also from a developer's point of view, it's very easy. If you want to make your own custom theme, at minimum, you can make just one style.css file and then you have your own theme. And it's very easy to take WordPress and adapt it and use plugins. And it's quite easy if you're a PHP developer or a HTML or CSS JavaScript developer to make your own themes and stuff and get WordPress to do useful things for you. So easy to use and easy to extend, in my opinion, is the reasons why WordPress is so popular. And then there are also some very common problems related to WordPress. One is security. I'm quite sure all of you have seen lots of news. News here and there for a long time about security issues in WordPress. Well, at the moment, <coughs> I don't think WordPress, at least WordPress core doesn't have security issues, but traditionally this is something people are very concerned about and it's something newspapers like to write about. And then a second common challenge with WordPress is its performance. People usually, or quite often you see developers who install like 60 plugins on, your, on their WordPress site and then they ruin the performance and so on. So these are two fields that needs education and maybe some technical improvement as well. And these are also two fields that if you go online, you will find endless and endless amounts of guides and tutorials and blog posts. They are usually titled something like 10 things to do to improve your WordPress performance or 10 things to do to fix your WordPress security. And most of the time they recommend that you install more and more plugins. And I don't like those 
because most of them contain wrong advice. They are they are not meant. Those articles have not been written to truly serve the reader. They have been written just to as a clickbait or something like that. So I've done lots of myth busting around WordPress security with this talk and showed a sensible way how to approach WordPress security. By the way, the timer is not on here, so I still have 30 minutes left. <coughs> so, but now, today I'm not going to talk about security, I'm going to talk about myth busting WordPress performance issues. Alright, so instead of just saying, recommending 10 plugins to install and then your WordPress performance is sold, I'm going to explain what is my approach to WordPress performance. And the most important thing is that you need to be able to measure the performance. You can't just randomly try out, read some blog post that recommends you to do 10 things, and then you do those 10 things and then you expect that you have solved a problem. You can't just randomly do that. If you're very lucky, it might solve your problem, but usually you're not. So you shouldn't follow advice like that. Instead, you should have a systematic approach that first you need to figure out how to measure the speed of your site. Then you need to figure out something to improve. And then you need to measure again to validate that you actually improve the performance, that you actually made a, a change that matters. And then you need to do this over and over again. Rinse and repeat. All right, so the step one is to measure. And this is the most important step because people usually completely ignore this step or measure the wrong things. So you need to, before you start improving anything, you need to establish a baseline. How fast is your website at the moment? Sometimes people, even when they read these blogs online, that 10 things to improve your WordPress in performance, sometimes they even make their sites perform worse. But they don't understand that they don't notice that because they didn't measure before and after. But what you should do is measure before and after. So there's lots of easy to use tools online. How many of you have been using web pagetest.org. That's my own favorite. There's also lots of others like GT metrics and Pingdom tools and so on. And uh, these tools are uh, easy to use. You don't need to install it. Anything, you just go to a website. They are free to use. At least the basic version uh, versions are free to use. And they do a nice job of visualizing what they find from your website and what they measure. And these all measure the full page load. But now when I'm talking about WordPress, then we are actually not interested in the full page load because that includes CSS and JavaScript and such things which are not specific to WordPress. But what is the thing that is specific to WordPress? That is how quickly the WordPress PHP code base can produce the HTML file which is sent to the browser. So if you're using, for example, web page test, then you can see that uh, here's the arrow. That's the step you're interested in. That's WordPress and PHP code that's responsible for how many milliseconds that step takes. And that's the thing to measure. And my favorite way to quickly measure this is to use curl. How many of you know curl? Wow, quite a lot. Good. <coughs> so it's a simple command line tool. And you can use it from your own laptop. Or even better, you can SSH in to your web server and then use curl from there. Because if you are measuring with curl the speed from your own web server, then you com completely eliminate network lag and you measure purely how fast is your own server and the PHP. And this is the comment to run. Is, is somebody familiar with a comment like this? Did you know that you can use curl to 
measure the speed of a response. A few hands are raising. So most, to most of you, this is a new thing, good. So this is how the command looks like. And you can look later on online the slides and copy paste this command to your own website. So what this command does, it runs curl, it doesn't, it directs the actual output to null, so it doesn't show you the HTML stuff. The only thing it prints out is the total time it took for curl to connect to the server and download the content. <laughs> Sometimes if you have a professional hosting environment with front proxy caches and stuff, then your site, when you're querying with curl, might not always come from PHP. You might have a proxy in front. So then you can add this pragma no cache header. You put a capital H and then the HTTP header text there, and then it will burst all the caches, caches and always fetch the result from the server from PHP. I, this pragma no cache, it's a standard thing. For example, if you press F5 in your browser, your browser will send this pragma no cache to the server when it reloads a page. So this is a standard thing. And then, of course, you might have some random variation. There might be something in your code that sometimes is executed and sometimes not. So it, so it might vary how quickly the page is generated. Or you might have a busy server that there are some other processes interfering so you get the variable result. So to get a, a result which is uh, easy to compare and reliable to compare, you need to run it for a while and then see what the average was. And here is a simple bash loop to do that. First you define that you have standard US local so that you get your numbers with the dot in a standardized way. And then you have a for loop which will loop 20 times. You can change that number to whatever you want. And then it will run the same curl example I just showed, but it will loop it over and over for 20 times. And then when it's done, it will pipe the result to awk, which is a command line tool for doing calculations. And then this thing will add the speed and then calculate the average. And in, in this example, the average was 137 milliseconds. All right. Also, another way, this if you're using curl, this obviously requires that you know what is the exact URL you are testing. And most of the time, you're probably just testing the front page. Sometimes you might have a performance issue that is not visible on the front page, but it's related to producing some sub page. And to catch that, you can either do some scripting magic to loop all your pages with curl or if you have a good server environment you can for example in nginx you can log the request time in your http log and here's an example if you look like this you will get here how many milliseconds nginx took to deliver the result and that's visible because here's a custom additional field in the Nginx, Nginx configuration. How many of you are using Nginx? Maybe a little bit over half. How many of you are, you are using Apache? Yeah, that's very popular as well. My own favorite is Nginx, and I think Apache has something similar, but this, is, this example is for Nginx. So this way you can log real actual uh, usage data and how how fast your s different uh, pages were delivered to visitors. And then if you <coughs> have a log like this, you can then further analyze it with something. For example, my own favorite is Go Access. And in Go Access, 
if you analyze an access log, it will print out these columns, which are zoomed in here. So this means the average time it took to, this is the average time for any URL on your site, and then this is for the most popular if the table is ordered by this column. And then you have something called cumulative time, which will calculate for the same URL all the time in a cumulative fashion how much your server spent delivering that URL. So if you, in this example, actually the table is ordered by the cumulative time spent delivering certain pages, then you can find which pages consumes most of your server time, and then you can focus on the top ones to, uh, uh, to optimize them to get, the, to get your <coughs> total server uh, kind of uh, resources decreased. How many of you have heard about Go Access before? Yeah, a few people. So this is pretty neat. All right, so here was some ways to measure how fast your PHP is. Then the next step is to optimize. Here's a quick and dirty way to do it. How many of you use VPCLI? I think everybody should raise their hand next year because it's great. <coughs> you can do lots of things with it very quickly and you can script it and so on. And here's an example of scripting VPCLI. So sometimes the project doesn't have a budget to uh, fix, like improve PHP code. You just want to have a quick and dirty improvement in speed. And with this CLI loop, you can deactivate one plugin at a time and then measure how fast the site is. So here it will list all the plugins that are active for your site. Then it will echo the name of the plugin. Then it will deactivate it. And then for five times it will run curl. And then it will activate it again and then continue, which means that it will take the next plugin and do the same thing. So the output will look like this. Here we have a, this is the script running. So here we have a one plugin that got deactivated and then curl is run five times. And you can see that it takes about 500 milliseconds to load the page. Then that plugin is activated back again. And then it goes to the next plugin. Here, Advanced Custom Fields Pro as an example. And then when that is deactivated, it takes 60 milliseconds to load the page. And then this plugin is activated again. And then the next plugin is deactivated. And then it's back to about 500 milliseconds. So this reveals that this one single plugin, deactivating it will significantly decrease the loading time of this page. So this is a quick and dirty way to find out which is your slowest plugin. Then if you <coughs> want to do some more in-depth, you can use the debug bar. So in wordpress.org, there's a whole bunch of plugins which contain this debug bar in their name, and you can install them. And after installing them, you will get this debug bar and then a varying amount of plugins to this plugin, different pages, which will then tell different things about your site when it has been loading. I, I think that, for example, the uh, plugin called Query Monitor is quite popular and widely used. However, that has the problem that it tells you what function or what part of the site is slow but it doesn't, it quite seldom translates to something actionable, something that you, 
you could actually fix. So the best way and the most precise way to find bottlenecks in, in PHP code and in WordPress is to use xdebug. How many of you have heard about xdebug before? Wow, almost everybody. Well, I hope you will learn something new anyway. <coughs> so xdebug, it's a tool which will instrument PHP in a way that every time a PHP function is called, it will log which function was called and how long it took to execute. And, and visually, this means that when you are uh, uh, starting WordPress, when you are requesting a WordPress page, it will first load index.php, and inside index.php, it will run lots of functions, and each one of those functions will then run lots of other functions, and you will get this execution graph. And you will know what, what function called what function, and how many times and how long did it take? And to install xdebug, here's the example how to do it if your server is running Debian or Ubuntu. And one note is that <coughs> this makes your site very, very slow because it instruments every single PHP function. So don't do this in production. This is something you should only do in a staging or development environment. So first you install this PHP plugin. Then you need to configure its config file and enable it. And then put this, make sure you have these configurations in place. This is the directory where your profiling files are going to. This is the file name pattern they use. And then here is this enable trigger, which is very important and I will show you soon what the trigger is. And once you have updated the configuration, then you just restart PHP and then it's acting. And then to profile a page, all you need to do is to append this get parameter to the request. This is the trigger. If the request has this get parameter, then xdebug will activate and generate a profiling file. So then you will, when you run this, you will notice that the page is much slower than usually. And you will notice that in this location, every request will generate a log file. And this log file is a text file. You could technically read it yourself, but that's very inconvenient. So what you want to do is install some kind of tool that uh, makes a graphical representation of the log. And my favorite is WebGrind, because you can install that on the server right where you are doing the profiling and you don't need to do any anything special and it's very easy to install. Here are the commands. You just clone the Git repository. It's PHP and then you install some libraries for it so it can do some graphs. And if you are using the WordPress core development environment varying Vagrant Vagrants, then xdebug is already pre-installed there. And also if you are using some other Vagrants, for example, our Vagrant, then xdebug is easy to enable there. All right, so after you've set up xdebug, then you start profiling. And this is how WebGrind looks like when you open a profile file. So here is the selection. You can select which profiling file you want to analyze. And uh, here you can choose if you want to show milliseconds or percentage. And then you will get here in this example, I've chosen milliseconds. And then these columns will show how many milliseconds these things took. And then this percentage here will uh, filter out some of, of the PHP function so that there's less results of the, the more minor PHP functions are not always that relevant for profiling. But er, here I have set it to 98%. And this table, it has a few columns. This color here is not 
an indication of speed in any way. It's just an indication of what kind of function type it is. Here is the name of the function. And then here is a sub table of all the functions that this function calls. And then you have the invocation count is how many times that function was triggered and how long PHP spent inside that function. And then total inclusive cost means how much time PHP spent inside that function and all that of its children. So this is how you then track around. You, your goal is to find some function which is which is has a high total self cost. That means that PHP spent a lot of time inside that function. And then that's the goal you want to op optimize. Usually if you have a clean WordPress install, you will see lots of these uh, translation related functions. All right. And then in WebGrind, there is this search field you can use so either you can either you can sort the entire table use by the total self cost which will show you the slowest functions at to at the top or you can use the search feature to find some usual suspects which are uh, might not be the slowest completely slowest function you have but which are uh, often slow and sometimes quite easy to optimize. And some of the typical words you can put there is like load and open and curl and query. Then you will get lots of results related to file opening and especially if your code is opening with load or open on curl are opening some files from an external server this will show it up. And here in the UI, you also have this button, show call graph. And if you press that one, then you will get this call graph. And you can see in a visual manner how your code behaves. And this is actually quite good, not only for profiling, but in general to understand what your code is actually doing, because WordPress has so many hooks and actions and whatever, that you might not have a clear picture of what your code is actually doing. And looking at the call graph, you will learn what it does. So these this colors here represent the time, how much time is spent in each function. And then the, uh, the color and the width of this line represents how many time the connect the call was made <coughs> all right so when you go profiling what are some typical issues and how can you solve them so here's a table a profiling result which is sorted by the total self cost and this is i don't know if this is percentage or or milliseconds i think this is probably in percentage because the numbers are so low so here you can see that uh, the mysql query function included the highest total self cost but that is actually <coughs> quite a logical thing because the database is most often the bottleneck in the application. So you should, when you're looking at your code, the database function should be at the top. And that's kind of normal behavior. And then we, if you look at the other functions that are up here, you will see the slowest ones. But these are not perhaps that obvious what to optimize. But here I've looked at the vpdb function get results of who is calling them and I can see here what I what this function is calling and then who has been calling this function and from here I find this function called avada upgrade clear twitter widget transients so 
it turns out here's actually a very convenient button when you click on this icon a new window will pop up and it will show you the exact line in the code where this thing where this function exists so you can look what it's doing and when i did this i noticed this function here and i went looking at the code and it is what it was about this avada team that did an upgrade check on every page load and that was completely unnecessary so i just commented it away and then the page was loading much faster then here's another typical thing so wordpress to start with does a lot of it has its native get text implementation which is pretty slow so it does a lot of so m quite often in the profiling you see uh, translation related functions high up and then if you install this very popular translation plugin vpml it also usually ends up quite high and it does a lot of database queries and and stuff which the na the wordpress own translation functions don't do so this usually creates a lot of so this usually leads to a slowdown of the site and if this is an issue then i recommend polylang which is another translation plugin which is it doesn't have all the features as vpml but it is significantly faster right then here's an example of the curl exec that was on the top of this profiling you probably don't see this text that well but here it reads php curl exec and then you can trace down who is calling it and it turns out when you So all of these are links which you can click. So if you see here a function that is slow, then you can just click what was the function it was called from and then boil down, drill down to the function that initiated it and then you will find what was the problem. And in this case, the problem was this, this line in the code which was slow in a plugin called Leadsius. And the way to fix this was to use VP transients. So you couldn't just disable this a API call because it's relevant for the daily function of this plugin. So what I did, I wrapped it in a WordPress transient. How many of you know what a WordPress transient is? This is something every WordPress developer should learn. It's super easy. So this is this uh, caching system, built-in caching system in WordPress. It basically has just two functions. It's super easy to use. One is to uh, set transient. It's one function, you give a name. It's just key value. Here's the key, here's the value. And then what is the expiry time for that data? And then it has a second function, which is get, and then just get by the key name. So it get transient and set transient. And this is how you use it, that instead of always calling something that is slow and might not always even update, so you can use, so it's a good target for caching. You just wrap this around, so you just first check, do you have it cached already? If you have it, then use that value instead. And if the cache is empty, then, only then, you make the actual uh, call to an external server and then you save that result and the next time this page is called if it's within one hour it will find the cached version all right and sometimes you have a piece of code that doesn't run on every single uh, request so what you can do in that case is that you can run your your xdebug profiling in a for loop for 
In this example, I've done it for 100 times. And then you print out the time, how long it takes. And then you will see that most of the time it's, it's, uh, it uh, stays at the baseline, but every now and then it is slower for some random reason. And then if you go looking at the files, then you will find some files which are significantly, some log logs which are significantly bigger than the other ones. These are the ones where the code did something special, which was unusual. And then you, then you go profiling that file to find what was special in that PHP run. All right, so then you can remove some code or limit some code or use transient or whatever when you've pinpointed what is the exact function that is causing the slowness, then you can try to fix it some way, you do some change. And when you've done, then you validate that did this actually make the site faster or not. And then you use the same, same measuring things I already show you, and then you do this over and over again. It's usually not done in one time, you probably do the measuring and validating like 10 or 20 times before you're done optimizing a site. All right, do you have any questions at this point? No, I'm not complete, I just, if you have any questions at this point, nobody's raising their hand. Right, so here's a little bit, all right. Hi, uh, I just saw the transient solution that you implemented. I have um, two comments on that. First of all, uh, you can't be sure about the duration of uh, the transient expiration. I mean, uh, I don't know what this file web forms JSON is, and I don't know how often I this is uh, uh, ref ref refreshed, but uh, maybe in this hour you might uh, lose uh, valuable information. Uh, first is this, and then uh, this is a, a plugin that is developed by another developer. So you need to do this thing every time the plugin creates, a, a releases an update. How efficient is that? Yeah, so what the best way is that you do this once, and then you send the patch to the original developer, and then the original developer, at least in this plugin, it wasn't using transients anywhere. So ap apparently the original developer didn't know about transients at all. So you do your patch, then you send it to the original developer, and then hopefully they will adapt that. And then when you update the plugin, the next versions will have it built in, and the original developer will, if this decision to update once in an hour was wrong, then the original developer will hopefully do a better decision in that. Thanks. But of course, it's a good point. You shouldn't just go around poking your, your plugins because everything you change will be lost next time you upgrade the plugin. But if you have a, a performance problem on your site and it's some plugin that's causing it, then you need, need to fix that plugin to kind of validate that it was really that plugin that was the root of the problem. And then you, when you've done that, then you can, for example, send a patch upstream. That's the good, good part of open source, and hopefully your plugins are open source and open source friendly developers are behind them. All right, so here's a quick uh, example of this meto methodology in practice. So how fast can we make the default 2017? First, you profile it, and then you sort the column by total self-cost, and then you can see all these translation-related built-in functions. And then when you look at the code itself and do some research, you will find that, that uh, WordPress doesn't use native get text, which is a Linux Unix library, but instead it has a, its own get text that's completely made in PHP and it doesn't have any caching and it's kind of somewhat naive. And there's actually a solution for that. There's a plugin made by Aukor 
which is called the dynamic MO loader. And it will, instead of doing the naive stuff that the WordPress built-in get text is doing, it will smartly load only the translation files you actually need, and then it will also cache them. So this is the profiling before, and then after installing that plugin, I, I use Composer to install it because it's, it's not available on WordPress.org. And then after, you can see that the same functions either don't exist here anymore or they are much faster. And this is how you validate your entire speed improved. And you can see that the functions actually behave in a different way and in the expected way. All right, and you can find the code in this GitHub account of a default 2017 installation, which is slightly optimized. All right, so few things to remember. So you don't need to, when you are uh, profiling or when you are optimizing your page, now you know with curl how to measure the speed, of how to measure the response time. But you might not know which page is the slowest one, so that the Nginx access logs with the response time is a very good way to find. You don't need to measure anything. You just read the logs and see which URLs are slow. And then remember never to run xdebug in production. If you have it active, it will make PHP much slower. And then there are some other projects like H xhprof and uprofiler which you can run in production because they are not active all the time. They are based on some kind of sampling that are they do random sampling of certain PHP requests and then all of the, most of the production PHP requests stay fast. But these projects are somewhat defunct at the moment. And let's see what's happening in this space. I think there are some companies picking up the development of this and making new versions, but it, it's not there's lots of turmoil in that area at the moment. Also a few built-in PHP functions that are good to know are, are these. With this function, you can get at any, you can insert this command at any point in your code and then see how much memory PHP is using at that point. So you can use this to debug what's happening in your code and you can also spray this around your code to print out the time in your log. What is the micro time precision of how much the time was at that point in code. So then you can also use that to see what on wh what line you are going and how much time it took to get there. All right, so that was it. Thanks for listening. <coughs>
or sometimes in PHP, then you've already lost the performance game in that sense. But uh, one thing in WordPress which you should install is the object cache PHP drop-in. So I showed this VP transients in my talk. By default, WordPress saves that in the database, but if you install the object cache drop-in, then you can save it in, for example, Redis, which is in memory only. It's a key value storage and very fast. So that's something I would use. But I would not use anything like VC, V3 total cache or similar plugins. They are, they are just too slow. Um, when fixing the optimization problems, have you noticed common patterns uh, any common patterns arising? <laughs> yeah, and then cast plugins. <laughs> yeah, well, in general, I would say that that currently the good thing with WordPress, it's, it's so easy to do a plugin and it's so easy to get something useful out of it. But then it's also sometimes too easy to do something with WordPress and then people might just throw up some, show together some code and start using it and then somebody, some third party might think that this is actually a tested and well done code and so on. And, and there's, uh, for example, what I would like to see for the entire ecosystem to evolve is that there should be some kind of quality assurance in WordPress.org plugin repository. So currently, when you submit a new plugin to WordPress.org, there's a, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There's a, There's a fan human there. who makes a, re makes a review, but when you do subsequent uploads, there's no review, there's no automatic testing, there's no quality assurance, there's no performance testing, there's no static code analysis or anything. And if you want to know how I would, how I would do this, then you can come to WordCamp Yvaskula in Finland in February <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy the snow there <laughs> and listen to my talk about automatic quality assurance for WordPress plugins. Uh -huh. okay, can you not give us some hints, quick quick hints? Well, for example, Travis CI, it's a continuous integration platform that's free to use for open source plugins. And then you can look, for example, in my presentation, I had uh, links to my 2017 optimization. And there's a whole WordPress project in that Git repository, and there's also Travis CI files that do automatic testing for every commit. But I, I haven't built automatic performance testing for WordPress uh, plugins and commits yet. Thank you.